Hey guys, I'm rich now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Dick and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that all makes sense. And I'll tell you what's going on and why I think I think I may have just dethroned Anand for the mm -hmm. investor of the group. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, insane return. Insane return in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So sorry, guys, but if anyone needs investment advice, come my way. <laughs> just kidding. This is None of this is official investment advice <laughs> for the entire episode. I think it's pretty official. Don't sue us. <laughs> um, we got a lot to talk about today. I think the main thing, so there's a lot of topics. As you know, we always kind of run the whole uh, gamut of, uh, of topics. But I think the main thing today is just the world of the metaverse, NFTs, crypto, what they're calling Web 3.0. Two economies. There's what? a physical economy. Yep. And the virtual economy. Very true. So we're going to talk about that. Um, you know, one of the biggest tech companies in the world just completely switched their entire strategy to focus on this. Um, I think that's the main topic. So let's cover that. Uh, for a while, and then we'll cover some other news and everything that's going on, you know, back in the boring, like, physical world. <laughs> boring. Boring. <laughs> Supply chain. <laughs> Supply chain. Gives a boring. <laughs> Boats. <laughs> Stupid. Um, okay. Everyone ready? Yeah. Let's get into it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. I wonder if Ron Artest is pissed. The artist formerly known as. You know, the artist I think we both know Ron, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Both, yeah. Uh, By the way, I saw him riding, just casually riding a bike down Metro Boulevard the other day alone. Really? Yeah. I uh, spoke to him actually a bunch during the pandemic. Really smart, like really great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he changed his name to Meta World Peace. Yeah. Years ago. Seems like we got some plagiarism. This guy was way ahead of the curve. Way ahead. I remember how much shit he got for changing his name to Meta. Yeah. And he's been plagiarized. Completely plagiarized. And, you know, we talked in this last episode. If you didn't listen, we basically laid out the PR playbook for Facebook. Yeah, we did. And I think we were right. And absolutely blew it again. So Terrible rollout. So Facebook changed their name. Yep. They it's took their classic uh they took up. their classic um from the movie. They dropped the duh this time. Dropped the duh, yeah. Instead of metaverse, they called their company Meta. And Facebook announced it with Mark Zuckerberg, which I thought was the most charismatic we've seen him in 15 years. I hated it. I didn't on, watch the video. I saw the image I watched and the I video it. and I thought he was just like forcing himself to be normal. Yeah. It's like, bro, we know you're a robot. Just embrace the robot. You know, you're a robot. So <laughs> I have two things to say. One, you sh we talked about this right before the pod. Mm -hmm. Meta World Peace yeah. should have been in the video. I agree. Should have paid him $50 million, whatever he wanted. To clarify, Zuck should have paid Meta. Zuck should have paid Meta. Yep. And Meta hands him the name. Yep. And says, I am now... Whatever, fuck it. Pick a new name or yeah. just be Ron World Peace. Ron World Peace. <laughs> and Meta goes to you now, Mark. And and Do Mark well goes, thanks, Meta. Thank uh, like, thanks him. Yeah, but, but Ron. Yeah, thanks, Ron. He says, you're welcome, Meta. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Meta. Do you think Meta. he could be bought for 50 million? Meta yeah. World Peace. <laughs> the name Meta? I hope so. I mean, Ron's I'm just smart. saying, like, it would have lit the internet on fire. I agree. Because instead, you have Twitter going nuts, playing the Soldier Boy clip from breakfast club that he stole his whole flow yeah saying uh, how they're doing yeah, yeah how, damn, i should have checked <laughs> i should have known twitter would be on fire. twitter is just you know obviously twitter's you, perfect for these moments so, yeah, so what, it the, is i should have known the you have you have many groups upset with the name change you have the hardcore actual people working in the metaverses like the rusties of the world pissed yeah because it's facebook coming in plus where's the fucking creativity man yeah like oh we should get involved in the metaverse called meta so then Bro. and then you have all everyone else who's just like yo you stole my man's name yeah that's fair <laughs> which is definitely fair fair complaint. and then you know another missed opportunity why wasn't the announcement done like as an avatar not himself oh yeah huge fuck yep. just say everyone come to to put someone on put sandbox decentraland on yeah like 
put up a community on yeah. so that you get welcome. Imagine if Sandbox or Decentraland is where the announcement was going to be. Everyone log on. Everyone go to this place. They build like a metaverse stadium. Travis Scott performs. Exactly. But to be, the, the real answer is if you're serious about the metaverse or crypto as a builder, Facebook is the antithesis of that. It's the antithesis yes. of Web 3.0. Yes. And I think that is as big of the backlash you're seeing that if you look on Twitter today and the internet, everyone's just like, dude, you're literally the opposite of what we're trying to build. It's like weed shops becoming legal in LA and the LAPD opening one. Correct. And you're like, come on in. Yeah. Trust us. <laughs> yes. You'll like it here. It's just the opposite of everything they're about. It's, I think it's going to be a massively failed attempt because I think Zuck is like, if you had to think about Facebook, they're probably so confused right now. Yeah. They've got this massive money-making machine that's not stopping. Yeah. They know where the internet's going and they know their current infrastructure doesn't belong in Web 3.0. Yeah. And they know everyone hates the current. Like, even though they Just, use it and they're addicted correct. to it. Yeah. They have such a bad brand exactly. image. So you have, you, you have the worst brand. I mean, NPS score, right? That's, the, that's what everyone looks at. What's yeah. Facebook's NPS score right now? Well, no, no. Shit. They, there was a thing of like the top 100 brands in the world and Facebook wasn't on it, which is pretty crazy. Like despite how many people dislike it, I didn't see, I, I could be wrong, but I did not see it on the list. No, it's, you mean despite how many people use it, it's not yeah, on the list. Yeah. Yeah, it's just stupid, man. I don't think it works. I'm out. I think it's I think it's fucking Libra. Yeah. I mean, they're way more all in on this. I thing. agree. I agree, but I think it's I I honestly think Facebook is in an incredibly tough spot. I don't think that they're not capable of figuring it out at all. But I think it's a real like a way tougher spot than what maybe we even realize. Yeah. Just meaning like you have this aging audience, you are known and it's just going to come out more and more and more, the disinformation, the Russian interference, the and that, that's not stopping. You're looked at as just a place where people share QAnon videos yeah. and it's very not trustworthy. You're the face of it. So all of social media does it, but you're the face of it. Yeah. And Zuck, I feel like has just become like an evil... Like he has to change his perception. Yeah. I or like think, I said before, step down and just run it silently. Yeah. You should step down, start a new company in crypto land because you'll probably crush it. You should. And put a CEO in place at Facebook, secretly run it. And why are you trying to, you're trying to enter another area where no one wants you? Yeah. It's probably the worst. Well, the it's, I mean, Facebook's the most centralized place in the world. Yeah. By far. It's two point, whatever, four billion monthly active users, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's or 2.9, than- actually, sorry. 2.9 billion monthly active users in the world. That's as centralized as it gets. Yeah. There's nothing in the world that has 2.9 billion people doing the same thing every month. I'll tell you what, in that metaverse, they're just going to be storming the Capitol every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I imagine. Hey, it's time for the 9 a.m. <laughs> Capitol storm. But if you, think about guy, the the metaverse. Metaverse. <laughs> if you think about a guy like Zuck, he's obviously a genius. He's obviously one of the greatest technology revolutionaries that, the world's ever seen. It's probably him and Steve Jobs at this point and Bill Gates, three guys. Yep. He has to be so frustrated because he knows Web 3.0. He knows where everything's going. Yep. He knows crypto. Like He knows it better than 99.9% of the people of the world yep. just because of how smart he is. And he knows his current enterprise isn't fitting it. Yeah. And he's probably like, how the hell do I do this? He's got to step away. Even if he says like, yo, I'm stepping away, that shit got too... Corpo for me, too hard to handle. I'm really passionate. You know, we're over here at One Hacker Way. Yeah. This is my roots. I need to get back to my roots. Yeah, I want to go and go he'll crater the stock, right? Yeah. I think he does. Maybe cra- not. I don't I mean, I think look, it'll be a Bill he- Gates situation, right? Like find a good CEO, let them quiet. Thing is, is he's part of the well, problem. Well, Bill Gates actually found a terrible CEO. Yeah. And now he's a basketball owner. Yeah, but, <laughs> but that's just because he, he, that he put his boy yeah. on. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is like, yeah, I think the stock would crater on day one because that's just naturally what would happen. But don't you think we're getting close to a point where your average person, it's a negative that Mark Zuckerberg is the CEO? Yes. I think your average yeah. smart person, like you and maybe people in the tech industry and all that stuff, they see the genius behind the bad um, brand. But like, I think to your average person, him stepping down 
would be a good thing. So give it to Cheryl. Yeah, I think, people I still she, love Cheryl. They don't. I, I don't. I don't think she's the right person either. But don't I you think, think people they, still perceive her as good? Maybe. So maybe I, that's what has been. Uh, I mean, it's a great kind of speculation because we've talked about this ad nauseum that. Sheryl Sandberg has been completely out of the spotlight yeah. while Facebook's just getting bashed. Yeah. And you said in the Facebook book oh, yeah. that Cheryl was like critical in creating so much of like yes. the value add. Yes. So maybe this is the big rebrand that Zuck actually steps away and took all the heat the last two years. And then Cheryl's the hero. I agree. And the company would internally probably thrive. Look, Zuck is the genius when it comes to product. And how to make better and better products. But I also feel like he's a little handcuffed with product as is. Yeah. Right? What are you going to do? You're going to keep innovating inside of Facebook? I don't know. You're not going to keep acquiring things. You're not going to whatever. So step away. Let Cheryl run it as a business. Clean up the image. I'm, lean in. It's still going to be printing money for another decade. No matter what happens. Yes. yes. <laughs> like he's like uh, Trump. He could go shoot some money on Second <laughs> Avenue and Facebook stock's going to soar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, even the stock went up today with the… Uh, Meta? Um, you know, um, I just, what, where did my, my head go? Totally blanked here. Yeah, I just look. Either way, the stock's going up. I just think longer term, it's, I think they're in a way worse spot than we realize. Yeah. And it just seems to me, I could be so wrong on this, but it seems to me like of all the moves, of all the like company defining moves you could have made, I just don't think this is a good one. And I don't think I don't think the name's good. I don't think the rollout is good. I don't think I I don't You're know. entering a world that is literally almost like created in spite of you. The only thing worse than this would be if the US government decided to make a metaverse. But look, you're gonna need hardware for this. Maybe he thinks he can play in hardware. And he if is Oculus to play yeah. and you know, think about it. Like, yes, it's a decentralized system, but you're doing it on a fucking Apple or a Dell or like what you know, yeah. you know. So you're still there's still plenty of money to be made peripheral of the metaverse that big ass companies are going to make money on, right? Like, who's going to make the hardware? Who's going to make the operating system? Like, there's still a lot of money to be made by big ass companies. Yeah. Like, Nvidia is going to get fifty times bigger. Yeah. Selling the the chips yeah. that power this whole industry. So, so I mean, maybe Facebook's like, we just want to be on the peripheral. You guys do all the building. I think he has to be very careful on what role he wants to play in the metaverse. Yeah. Because like Anand said, like the whole the whole idea is to be decentralized and not rely on one central power. Yeah. Um, but there's good that doesn't mean big companies aren't gonna make money. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Apple will be the biggest beneficiary of the metaverse. Yeah. So will Dell, so will NVIDIA, yeah. so will AWS. Yeah. Like these will all still be the biggest beneficiaries of the metaverse. I agree. It's actually, I think if you were to, if we were to speculate on the private conversations that are happening at all big tech companies, yeah. I think they're terrified at the pace of innovation that's happening in crypto. Because yeah. if Web3, Web3 is happening at this like light speed. Web3 didn't even exist a year ago. Yeah. Right. It was this like fantasy, like, this is how we imagine crypto to be. Yeah. And okay. it's happening like at this pace that we've never seen technology evolve. Yeah. And if Web3 is real, all of big tech is disrupted. Yeah. Stripe's disrupted. Facebook's disrupted. Apple's not because you need a phone to get on. Yeah. 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 Apple's fine. And by so will Amazon because guess what? You're going to need snacks. Yeah, Amazon, and Apple are probably, <laughs> Amazon and Apple are probably fine. Yeah, you know you're not doing leaving your house. Yeah. <laughs> but like Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all of it. Think about this though. The government has just caught up to also putting pressure from the other side of like regulating and all that stuff. So now if you're on web, you know, to, you're your social guys, yeah. you're getting squeezed from both sides. You're yeah. seeing like that you have to innovate, but at the same time, you're getting this newfound attention of like, hey, what are you guys doing over here? What's the privacy issues? What's the, yeah. you know what I mean? Because even cloud computing, that is going to get disrupted with Web 3.0. You're not going to need to go to Microsoft or AWS, Amazon to get cloud services. Why? Because there'll be a protocol that'll happen uh -oh. on the blockchain. Uh -oh. You'll be able to buy a token. And I think that's a ways away. Sure, but it's happening. Yeah. And I think if you look at where the talent is going, it's the engineers are all flocking to crypto. Yeah. 
and they're flocking in a decentralized way. I, I told a story to D. Um, I have a friend. She's a very talented engineer. Worked at Uber. Very senior engineer at Uber. Yeah. And kind of has been on a sabbatical. And then went on some message board and found a, a project that some protocol wanted built. Yeah. And she looked at it and she's really smart. She's like, this will take me seven days. And they were offering 30 ETH. So she's going to make $120,000 in seven days. Yeah, that's dope. Well, <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's good money. But if you just bought Shiba Inu coin a year ago, you'd worth $5 billion. Yeah, let me tell you what, guys. I'd like to announce. Are you the wallet that I'm they also, talked about? And put 8000 in August is worth $5.4 billion? Don't call me Moby Dick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll just call you Dick. <laughs> Drop the Moby. <laughs> I like to make an announcement. I'm just yeah. Dick. <laughs> Drop um, well, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I decided the other day to get off the bench. So back it up. Drama goes, I made money at Chibu. And I was like, oh, wow. He goes, how much did you make? You said you made $10,000. Yeah. I was like, oh, damn. When did you invest? And he goes, last week. Yep. <laughs> yep, I decided. You look, we sit here and we commentate a lot on uh, the meme stocks and on what's going on. And I decided I'm going to hop off the commentate commentators table and and dip my toe in. Whoa! So here I am with Jason and Pete, wherever the hell he's at. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a successful. And you got out. I got out. Paper hands. Sorry, sorry to the gang. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to the rest of the gang. But why the hell did you buy it last week? I'll tell you why. I. <laughs> Dick. I, listen, uh, call me Dick. I, I, we've talked about it a, a, a bunch of times, and I'm fascinated by it. Um, I read a book called "The Antisocial Network" by Ben Mesrick about mm -hmm. the GameStop mm -hmm. thing and what happened. He already wrote a book about it. Yeah, yeah, it's really crazy. What happened in January? I just saw it at the bookstore. And I bought it. Yeah. Um, I. He's got ghostwriters. Not writing these books. How yeah. did he write a book and get to release? In like I don't know, but it's months. pretty good. It's pretty thorough. <laughs> it's pretty thorough, like exactly what happened. All right. Um, so anyway, so I was all fired up about it. Spending some late nights on TikTok. Really saw the momentum building. And I'm like, hey, I think this is a, a minor moment. Not a GameStop moment, but I think this is a minor moment. And uh, so I threw some money in there for shits and gigs. And I'm not kidding you. It seems like from the moment I threw it in there, the thing started skyrocketing. So what was going on on TikTok? What do you think started people like, if you want to be rich, you go to Shibu. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> people started sharing a lot of stories about these apparent investors who had put like a hundred bucks in and made five million or had put, mm -hmm. you know, 50 grand in and made a billion. And I knew, look, I'm, no, I'm not fucking, I don't want to even kind of paint this like I saw something nobody else saw. But I was just like, look, these fucking guys, these stories are going to take off. And everyone's going to see this as a quick moment to get rich. And you're going to get like a quick pop probably um, because these stories are so outlandish and they were gaining so much momentum and views and whatever. And so I was like, let me just see what happens and try to ride the wave. I feel I bad for Pete, man. What? Doge is kind of making it. He ride run. Doge back down to the Yeah, he's Doge not house. selling, but Doge is not having that moment again. Doge is over. Yeah, Doge just isn't, Doge and Shibu aren't the type of places where you put money to hold it. No, you ride you put the money wave. to hope for a quick buck and get out, and then put that winnings over in Ethereum and yeah, uh, yeah, Bitcoin. And and so the the big story of this whole uh, rise in the Shiba coin is someone in August of 2020, which is literally 15 months ago. Yeah, this is the main story that this, made me realize. So eight thousand dollars was bought. Yep. Is now apparently worth five point seven billion dollars, and you can obviously track it on the blockchain. The address is public; anyone can go look it up. Yeah. Holy shit! Is the five point seven still in the wallet? That's. I mean, as of yesterday, it can was. you even get rid of five point seven? No, that's that's the that's the thing. It's almost like similar to Elon Musk is worth two hundred eighty billion, whatever the number is. Yeah, it, he can't ever. So I have 28 billion of So cash. what happens to me if I'm on Coinbase and my wallet now says 5.7 billion? Mm -hmm. What do I do? I think you start selling a million a week, two million a week. And that I'd be able to. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. there's enough volume. Like for, the volume today on like the Shiba coin is, let's look here. And Coinbase can handle that? Like if I trade- $33 yeah. billion dollars yeah. was traded today. Yeah. And so that's also important to note that that means hedge funds. That's not- 
You said thirty-five billion. Thirty-three. Thirty-three yeah. billion is not retail. That means hedge funds, Citadel, Renaissance, like you name it. There's some division that's like we're we're day trading. They're on this. TikTok and yeah. they're like, fuck it. They gotta have kids with fucking Mountain Dew and Cheetos, just like yo, man. What here's. Here's 500 million. So I think what, do whatever. what yeah. Wall Street's realized, at least the smart hedge funds, they watch the meme stocks, they watch Reddit, and then they pile in. Yeah. Because also another big thing, so there was a couple things trending. There was one thing trending that, um, here's all these crazy glorified stories of the, these people who got rich. And then you started seeing all these people being like, this is it. Like, I'm getting rich too. Here we go. And then there was also a story what was the story of oh the people kept saying like a massive whale just put you know 30 million into shibu like look at it here it is here's the story whatever so it's things like that where look i didn't even bother to check if that was true or not but just seeing that momentum build because these people are watching so closely Mm -hmm. that if a hedge fund or something like that did put in a big chunk of money they all call it out and so not only did they do it, but they call it out as proof that they're all about to get rich. It all just snowballs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, so now it's uh, a... What what's the market cap right now? Billion. So, jeez. Th- so it's a $35 billion with $35 billion. Doge. Oh my God. Shibu is a meme of a meme. Doge is a meme. Shibu is a meme of Doge. Shibu is higher than Doge. Bigger than Doge. I see what I'm looking Nothing at is makes sense. Dogecoin's 40 billion and Shibu's 36. So hey, it's getting close. So they're going back and forth. But Do, earlier, yeah. like Do, yeah, Doge last went night. up today. Doge hit as high as oh, yeah. this morning. Doge is up 30, 27%. Yeah, I just put a couple bucks in there. Oh, wow. Just but, rolled some of my winnings. So if you, <laughs> if you think about how like Wall Street people will, will make fun of it other than the hedge funds who made billions of dollars yeah. and say like, oh, this isn't real. What are kids doing? Isn't it just the market cap of the pulse of the internet at the moment. Um, Meaning, if you value how much, how many impressions Shibu got on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube in the last week, yeah. and you were to extrapolate it, is it 35 billion? Maybe. If you were to, yeah, I would say you could probably do that. It's globally, right? It's yeah. global. I would you say have, if you tracked mentions, they would correlate heavily. Yeah, because you have 5 billion smartphones. Yeah. Of the 5 billion smartphones, how many type Shibu in the last, Seven days. Yeah. But you know what these guys do is they go on coinmarketwhatever.com and you um, you just go to trending or search. They're doing the ghetto version of the same thing. S- searched, most trended, lowest market cap. You kind of go through the different filters and you find the coin that has the lowest market cap, the highest searches, the highest mentions. And then that's what you go dump your money. Yeah. Because like, if you think about it, it's a $36 billion company current, like in, in theory, right? Yeah. How many $36 billion companies have a brand as big as Shibu right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, $36 billion, you said? Yeah. I mean, Shibu's like number one. Shibu, right now, today, <laughs> yeah, exactly. is like bigger That's than Nike. That's my point. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you can't so look it's at it. still time to jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, well, you went, yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is this is, so what this, you're is saying this is actually like even more innovative in my mind because yeah. it's pricing culture yeah. currently. And when she moves no longer relevant culturally, it'll crash. crash. Yeah. But I think the added, the added layer of complexity on that is Shibu doesn't become relevant for its own sake and then the money follows. It's a snowball that happens where as it gets more relevant, the money follows, which makes it more relevant. Yeah. Which then the money follows, which makes it more relevant. And then it crashes and falls apart. So like literally crypto trading, if someone says I'm a crypto trader, 99.999% of those people are playing a game where money is just moving around in waves and you hope to get in before it comes and out before I it mean, passes. I mean, that's stock trading though. Like it's momentum trading, right? Like that's what the best Wall Street traders, all they're doing is they see a little action happening yeah. somewhere, they just pile in. But and at least so- like, I don't know, at least we could probably be lied to and said that it was based on like business fundamentals. No, there isn't. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's all bullshit. Okay, well then yeah, it is exactly that. <laughs> Then it's exactly that. It's literally what I think it is, is it's like, it's the everyday person's version of what the stock market. Yeah, because I think I think GameStop revolutionized finance. I'm not even like joking. It did. It did. But I think that the reason why it did, so as a researcher and investor myself, <laughs> uh, the reason why it did is because that just woke <laughs> everyone up. That story was so sensational. 
That story was a combination of events that probably will never happen again. Mm -hmm. But the story was so amazing and blew up so big that it made everyone turn on to one simple fact, which is I could get rich quick. There's lottery tickets going around. Yeah. And I need to get in on those. And so now a small group of people really that were in Wall Street Bets on Reddit that understood even what was happening and got involved early, that number of people now is millions and millions and millions because everyone's ears are perked up to how do I ride the next wave? And so something that was just a Wall Street Bets Reddit thing is now a TikTok thing, an Instagram thing, an everywhere thing because everyone's looking for the next lottery ticket um, to be the next. And to give hope to everyone... That didn't participate in Shibu. I didn't participate. Yeah. Did, did you? No. So we missed out. Yeah. Drama's the rich guy now. Yeah, sorry, guys. And I you've been dethroned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but I, I kind of think about this the same way I think about like early stage tech investing. Yeah. When we missed out on Uber, we were like, oh my God, there's never going to be an Uber again. And there's been like 500 Ubers yeah. since. Yeah. And there's going to be so many more Shibus. Yeah. This well, is well, the new well, norm. Well, he, here's the thing is the one scary part about this whole thing is it's all about the flavor of the week, yep. right? So I'll give you an example. I haven't had a fucking word about NFTs this week. Because it's Shibu? Shibu, yeah. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. literally no one's talking about NFTs this week. The There's same- not enough fucking ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how much NFT volume uh, plummeted. shifted to plummeted. Shibu? This week probably absolutely plummeted. Uh, we should, I'm going to try to search to it. Yeah. So, it's so so next- literally just like money. money's like floating around. Yeah, exactly. And so I think... I think the, the the interesting part is if you haven't participated in any of these booms yet, there's going to be more. Be a lot more. I think there's going to be one a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cuz there's there's nothing stopping a group of people from creating momentum to create billions. Now now you've proven you can create tens of billions of dollars in market cap. Yeah. Instantly. Yes. Yeah, well, look, here's what I would recommend once again as a, you know, researcher researcher and investor i yeah let me just say this is not uh, (laughs) financial (laughs) financial advice i'm sure there's some sort of repercussions here uh just kidding Uh um but the look like i think about this all the time you told me about bitcoin over and probably every day in the office (laughs) when it was at like a thousand dollars or something yeah a coin maybe three at the most Mm. i didn't do it i was like damn silly me it was literally as easy as just being like okay i'll put five thousand dollars even would have been nice uh same thing with Shibu. We all knew and we're talking about Shibu back when apparently this 5.7 billionaire, but it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. We could have easily put $1,000 into that. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is like, people should consider, do I get in trouble for this? People should consider, <laughs> this isn't real advice. Like no matter what your income is or what your cash is, like just mess with it. Because if you get one Shibu, just like tech investors do, yeah. yep. if we put a thousand in every coin or everything we heard about, we would be, Millionaires, billionaires. apparently billionaires, <laughs> yeah. off of Shibu because one hit. And I think that's like the fun Yeah, way so to... it's basically like the VC way of uh, investing. Yeah. Nine of 10 fail, get the one Shibu. Yeah. So who won? Like the way that I see it, correct me if I'm wrong, but tech investing over the last you know decade or more has essentially been who was there first, who had the best relationships, and who got to put their money into the most things. Yeah, just writing. It. So basically, if you were a tech investor the last 15 years mm-hmm. and you didn't make a lot of money, like you... Uh, honestly, it's what's the you won the lottery, meaning that's like a one in a million. Yeah. Meaning like yeah. it's it was impossible to not make money in technology. So what I'm getting at is, and then look, now we look at those people, some of them are, but we look at those people as genius investors. In my opinion, there's kind of the like softball version of that, the 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 fun carnival version, which is what's happening in crypto, which is the same thing. Anything that seems to have meme capability, maybe people are talking about it because it c- could have a use case down the road. Put a hundred bucks into it. Put yeah. twenty bucks into it. Put a thousand bucks into yeah. it, and you'll then you can literally sit on top of your throne of Doge in five years and be like, "Yeah, I'm a genius crypto investor." Yeah, exactly. You know, I think that's what kids are going to do, and I think that's where you're really going to see in the next few years. Like, like I'd love to see the reality show following the five, you know, five of the eighteen year olds that became multi multi millionaires and how they carry themselves now as crypto visionaries. Yeah, because they did the same. Strategy. Yeah, I think I, I think it's also D and I in a group chat had a conversation how like the distribution of wealth is going to look so different mm-hmm. than what we currently see because mm-hmm. of crypto, because of technology, because anyone pretty much can participate. Mm-hmm. So it's no longer like the generational family are the only ones that 
are rich. Yeah. Like, you know, parents made a ton of money, inherited real estate, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then they like slowly, I think that's like being disrupted real time. Here's the question. Go ahead. Sorry. No, my point is like, think about how many millionaires were made of Shibu in a week. Yeah. But don't you think, what I would guess happens is that there's a lot of these like young fluky millionaires, which will definitely will happen. Melrose is going to be fucking crazy. <clears throat> And then, but then all of the really rich people, or m- not all, but a lot of them, eventually f- figure it out. Like they don't go, they don't get completely displaced. Like how we talked about the flats of Beverly Hills aren't yeah. all crypto. No, you know, guess yeah. what? Rich people are smart. They're going to jump in on the, they're just not going to let everyone no, fucking make but money. But here's the them. problem. Like most rich people give their money to wealth managers. Like 99% do. Yeah. And currently today but that's the point it's happening so fast what if a 24 year old has a wealth manager that handles shibu and doge and has returns of 100 percent? but a 24 year old would give money to that person a 45 year old will not yeah i think you're probably right there i'd love to and you can't wrong, buy right. crypto if you have your money with a wealth manager at a major institution jv morgan ubs uh goldman doesn't matter what the name of the institution is no option you cannot buy cryptocurrency well, you buy the them. bitcoin you buy the the ETF. Yeah. yeah. You buy Coinbase as a stock, as a proxy to it. Yeah. But I'm saying the pace of wealth that's being generated is so staggering, right? This was zero. $36 billion of market cap. <laughs> yeah. Would, market you, would you compare it pretty much directly to tech? If you saw tech however long ago, 20 years no, ago. No, this is way faster. Yeah, it's just happening. Faster, pay, sure. Pace. But like a similar amount of disruption. Yeah, I think it's just happening just so quickly. So much faster. Yeah, and the thing is, even with tech, ten years ago, I mean, uh, all everyone came from two fucking schools. Mm-hmm. True, that's it's, true. Literally, it was just Stanford and Harvard people built all these businesses. I just feel like was- Shiba is just literally like some kid, like, hey, I have a dog like that. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like dogs. Uh, yeah, I like money. Thousand bucks. Yeah. I'm a billionaire. <laughs> I mean, I also think- what was the thought process to buy this coin? Same. What was Pete's deep analysis of Dogecoin? Fucking nothing. Zero. But I'll tell you, this is what's interesting. We, in the work that we've done together, rely very heavily on knowing what's up yeah. and knowing what's next. Because we know, you know, when you see so-and-so popping up with Zach Bia... You should probably introduce yourself and yeah, give yeah. him some five four. Yeah. Or some young and reckless. Jack I, Carlo. So we exactly. We know the value. I was like, I don't know that. Jack Carlo is that cool. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere. And and to me, it's the same theory. It's like if you like, yeah, what like the power of just trends and yeah, the power yeah, yeah. of just what people are talking about now is a power that's, you know, stronger than almost anything. And that's what I think is being shown. It's like it's almost like all trend, no reality. It's just literally you're betting on word of mouth. Yep. You're betting on something being a conversation. And I'll give it to, look, I think these people think that they're doing it. Like, they think that they're looking at use cases in the future. Like, if you watch TikTok, they're saying, like, this new coin, like, blah, 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 it's already being used by video, by Samsung has licensed it, apparently, for new games. Like, they think that they're doing research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not just as blind as, like, I like dogs, but that's all the people who follow. <laughs> you know, but, I, but look, I think, too, just like the rich people who exclude themselves from it, I think there's a lot of not rich people and just everyday people who aren't going to even come close to getting in on this. I mean, look, of the three of us, we talk about it three times a week. <laughs> yeah. I just fucked around one night and did it for fun. Yeah, nah, yeah. I still don't believe majority, and I've gotten, because we, we, we've talked about it, majority of people are still not participating in any of this. Yeah. Right? No, majority of people over the age of 30. I think the majority of people under the age of 30 globally are participating in somehow, some majority, way. But not majority. No, that's 50%. No way. These market caps would be insane. They'd be trillions of dollars. You can see how many accounts Coinbase has. I, okay, what is fine. That? 60 million accounts? 71 million wallets. That's nothing. But if you take Binance, which is bigger. Okay, that's, you take A lot of them Kraken, are using those other things. Maybe Crack. FTX or, is massive. Like they the move ones to the Bahamas. Okay, they get there's to a Coinbase. whole crypto community. So, you know, Puerto Rico is crypto yeah, land. Yeah. Now, uh, Bahamas is, is peaking crypto. its head up. Well, FTX, FTX moved its, guy, yeah. Yeah, he moved his headquarters to... Uh, there's a lot of decentralized exchanges that people are using that get coins long before and shout out to El Salvador they bought 420 Bitcoin they bought the dip yesterday really they bought more 
I'm gonna be rich. What if all of a sudden El Salvador, <laughs> like in this made up future, there's all of these billionaire, like 25 year olds living in El Salvador, which is the richest country in the world. El Salvador, <laughs> a Salvadorian people are protesting against the guy who is buying all this Bitcoin too. They're literally protesting the streets. Why? I mean, first of all, the first announcement, they made a lot of money already, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin was like a hospital, a, a vet hospital. Like if my country just was third world and they made all this money, the first fucking oh, that's thing. that's what they built. Like, that's what they were building. Yeah. Like, dude. Got it. What, what are you doing? Like yeah, there's people well, who don't have groceries. So and New to, money. You know, like, it's hard to figure out what to do What with Shibu that. did, uh, Coinbase is the number one app in the app store. Yeah. And they, and they smartly... It says you can buy BTC, ETH, yeah. and ship. Yeah, yeah, they. It does. They're yeah, in on, like the, the, on the on the, on the tagline. They they're in on the fuckery. Here's the thing. Well, well it's not fuckery be. though. And Robin Hood's built point. around it. Oh, yeah, my, no, my point is, Robin Hood missed out on it. So Robin Hood announced that their revenue was down what thirty five percent, some fucking staggering number. Yeah. And because they Doge hit a fucking wall. And that affected Robinhood's stock. Yes, and now, but so I think the 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 real mind shift you have to make, and I came to that conclusion after meme stocks in January, was that this is no longer fuckery. The money's too large. My, yeah, money I just can't be large figure out fuckery. who. Wins. <laughs> yeah, but I guess fuckery is no longer. You can call it fuckery, but it's real. Yeah, it's real fuckery. That's my point. Yeah, I just I can't figure out who wins. It reminds me of like Coinbase wins. Do you know what their Coinbase transaction volume, won. how much money they probably made in the yeah. last 24 yeah, hours? They win. But what it reminds me of is like when people were picturing the internet and they were thinking like, gosh, this is going to give the world access to the well, all the libraries okay, in the so world. Guess, and what do we do? Like we share pictures of cats <laughs> fucking falling yeah. off table. But that's, that's the pulse of the culture. That's actually what people want. It's similar how people go on Facebook yeah. to look for controversy. They yeah. want to be fed QAnon. They want to be fed extreme shit. Yeah. YouTube, what do you want? You want the most like catastrophic shit and that's what you want to watch. Yeah. Similarly, what do people want? Cats and dogs and pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you're not wrong. I, I just, it's so absurd. I cannot figure out where. Do you realize that once again, Doge was a joke. Shibu is a joke about Doge. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy's rich. <laughs> memes, man. I think memes might be the most memes valuable are, asset. Yeah, memes are, uh, and you know, we're talking about all this money being made, but uh, breaking news: Apple and Amazon both missed top line, bottom line, supply chain issues, really, labor costs. Both getting crushed that, after hours. That so honestly, so that's Shibu. that's the transfer of wealth. All the J.P. Morgan wealth managers, their clients, will be like, "We got crushed on Apple and Amazon," and, and the young kids, person's like, "Yeah, I'm a, my like daughter thousand. just made three hundred grand." <laughs> yeah. on a There's that one dog. mean guy that he always like. Uh, he talks about all uh, on TikTok. He like goes home and tells his parents how he made all this money and doesn't need them anymore. It's pretty good. <laughs> that's basically what's happening tonight. I wonder what Jamie Dimon thinks. It's he. He's just a game. I guarantee you. He's like, oh great. Anna just said it. Thirty-three billion of volume. J.P. Morgan is probably five billion of that. Yeah. Don't think all these financial institutions didn't make all uh, half the money. Well, J.P. Morgan can't, but maybe they have a trading arm. Can. Yeah, but they they actually legally can't even do it. They can, even their tr weird trading arm. I don't think so. I think you have to. These be These like, guys are good at following the law. They break the law all day. Yeah, maybe that's different. But I'll say it again. Here's the good news. Already in a few months, six months maybe, the idea of Bitcoin being legit seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. It seems like the most legit thing we have. <laughs> yeah, compared to what's out there. <laughs> yeah. You see inflation, you see Doge, you see Shibu, like the only thing reliable in this world is Bitcoin. <laughs> no, so it's it's actually like the pace at memes, right? This is pre-GameStop. Meme innovation. Meme innovation. Meme innovation. Uh, summer of 2020 when DeFi started taking off. This mm. is like July, August. DeFi. What's that? That's dead. No, it's still, people are printing money on DeFi. <laughs> you need fucking ways to actually use You can't make no, six You know no what thanks. the problem with DeFi is? You actually have to like do work to participate. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's, not gonna, trade that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. No, so my point was, I remember in July of 2020, that, that podcast Bankless yep. when I was trying to like figure out what the hell is DeFi because you saw all this money like yep. rapidly moving there and these it's I, these kids have to be in their 20s that we're talking the about kids. the yeah. Bankless yeah. kids right they're young that's they, what like, threw me off they're really young You're like hey you should check out this podcast it's like hey guys yeah <laughs> and like, Mickey Mouse. they were talking about sushi swap and pancake swap and mm -hmm. how there's meme wars this is July of 2020 and I was like 
what is going on? And they were creating billions of dollars of value, single billions, not 36 billion, yeah. right? But yeah. that was like the warning shot that we all should have been like, because they said on the podcast, memes matter in our world. Like when they were trying to figure yeah. out which is the DeFi coin that's actually going to work. Yeah. There was pancake memes. There was sushi memes. Yeah. I know this sounds I so like insane. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. I, to but, me, it almost feels like you could, in a, in a weird world, you could try to explain the same thing about why, you know, Louis Vuitton bag yeah, costs exactly. so much versus yeah. why this costs Yeah, explaining so much. to someone. Absurd. Yeah, it's why why do you pay, what's a Birkin, 100,000? Yeah. Yeah, 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 versus yeah. this. Yeah. Literally, you could show two purses from, you know, whatever. Uh, but whatever. DeFi created the meme version of crypto July 2020, in my opinion. And if you think about how far we've come, yeah. we've had all the meme stocks. We've had Dogecoin. Yeah. And now Shibu. Yeah. I mean, I think the real challenge is the stock market just feels sleepy and boring. But yeah. you can't be a millionaire overnight. That's no. True. Like, it why would you want to put enough. money in stocks when you can make... Five and a half billion dollars in a yeah. year. Yeah. You can be Warren Buffett tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Uh, how old that guy? Is. Yeah. You know how long that took? <laughs> this guy Compounding? Kind of, I mean, I me? can't wait to find out this kid's like 14. Oh, the Shibu 5.7? <laughs> yeah. For sure. He's like, mom. Mom, I, how do I get it? I have a billion. I have a billion dollars. <laughs> how do I get it out of my Coinbase, mom? <laughs> it's one billion. Uh, um, I just... <laughs> And it, and it shows, like, even, I, I think the crazy thing for these platforms, the Coinbases and the Robinhoods, it's like, you just have to entertain whatever yeah. people want to trade. You do, yeah. Because, you know, that's why Coinbase is entering the NFT marketplace, because yeah. that's, kids want to trade that. Yeah. They, they want to trade Shibu, you, you better have it. They want to trade whatever. Like, if tomorrow people are trading water, yeah. you better fucking have water. Yep. Yeah. Because that's what's crazy is think about it. There's a part of this whole news about Shibu is because there's a petition with hundreds of thousands of signatures to get it on Robinhood. Yeah. And Robinhood's, you know, put out some statement of, we'll, we'll look into it. Coinbase has had it. Yeah. They won that battle. Yeah. It's over. Who cares? They well, get Robinhood's going to get it like next week when the shit is already tanking. Well, yeah, you got to get the next coin, right? Yeah. Like whatever the next thing is. You got to be fast. You're not even selling the so, real coins anyway. Just it, say yeah. yeah exactly. Who cares? Yeah, Collect you the just money. S-H-I-B-U. Yeah. 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 Who knows what's going on in the back end? Nothing. I mean, the, there's a stock. <laughs> Vlad back there. Like, I don't there's know. a stock with the symbol meta that was up today. <laughs> there's a what? Stock with the symbol meta. Don't you also oh, think. Oh, it's not the same. It has nothing it has to do nothing. with it. Don't you also think uh, it's like Robin Hood's volume fell off a cliff last quarter? Think yep. about this last week. It has to be crickets. Everyone has to be literally just down. I mean, well, that's why Coinbase is number one app. I mean, yeah, they, they, I mean Robinhood probably saw a decrease. What do you think? 50% this last week? Uh, 90. Uh, 90%. I mean, judging by their earnings and that shit, and that's lagging. So what's happening yeah. today? That yeah. wasn't happening. Exactly. That's by my the way, point. that's Q3. That's end of August. So September, Coinbase's numbers. NFTs were it. This is Shibu. It's, I mean, Coinbase What's is, next week? Coinbase yeah. Next week, nothing that's going to be on Coinbase or Robinhood. It's going to be some new shit. Coinbase's yeah. earnings won't reflect, the next earnings won't reflect this last week's yeah. boost, but I bet you it's Blockbuster. Yeah. And their fourth quarter is going to be just mind-boggling. It has to be. They got to launch NFTs. When the do they launch quarter. NFTs? They said I don't know. Year. As of last week, they had two and a half million uh, people on the wait list. Last week. So what do you think? It's now six? Yep. Yeah. That's the, but are they going to try to do it Q4? Uh, they didn't say. Okay. D, is that your car down in the garage? Yeah. It's gone now. <laughs> 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 now listen, I've, I, we've heard from so many of our listeners that they've reached out to the car tracker guys and they're just selling cars apparently like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, so, hey, you know. Just be, I, be, I just took your money. It's now invested in Shibu. <laughs> Let's both hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> split it 50, 50. I wouldn't be surprised if you just walked in, sell the car. <laughs> We're already, I already doubled it. What you should do is just sell the car, go around selling other people's car, dump it in That's Shibu. That's the theme of the it. episode. Oh. Get rid of physical. Yeah. Get into virtual. Go meta. So there you go. So if you want go to take meta. our advice, which is not official advice, but if you want to take it, <laughs> get rid of all your physical things, go down, grab whatever car you got, <laughs> head on over to Car Tracker, hit those guys up. Dump that thing. <laughs> Get rid you of it. You don't need that in the metaverse. No. <laughs> Where are you driving to? 
Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. Unless you're going to get a new faster chip for your computer so you can speed around the metaverse. <laughs> I don't know, what's the point of a car? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you're young, I have, there's no point for you to have a car. No, I agree. Well, look, if you're looking to get rid of your car, head on over to Car Tracker. Uh, they make it incredibly easy. Yeah. They do test drives on FaceTime. Yep. Um, they send you the wire. If they choose to buy it, they send you the wire the same day. The big kicker is... At the end, so we want to be very careful. This is official advice. At the end of your appraisal, mention, after you get the number, mention that you heard about them on group chat. They'll give you an extra hundred bucks. I will say, dump the, that into Shibu and be a billionaire. It's, it's the fastest go. way. <laughs> it's the <laughs> fastest way to get rich. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of your physical goods. Go over to Car Tracker. Go to Metaverse. And go to Meta. Swing back. I agree. I totally agree. I think a used Civic is now worth like $10 billion in Shibu <laughs> yeah. if you got rid of it in you know, mid-2020. <laughs> uh, okay, so check the guys out. Where do you go? You go head over to cartrackers.com or car trackers on Instagram. They'll do the appraisal on FaceTime. Amazing. So you don't have to go see them. You could be test driving, buying Shibu, and getting your car appraised <laughs> all in one. <laughs> wow. Love it. Check it out. Let's get back to the episode. Well, can we move on to some boring news? Yeah. Like the economy, like just the regular old economy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the economy's tanking. <laughs> the economy's tanking. Uh, two, we're up now, though, it looks like. But uh, slowdown in consumer spending yep. is responsible for some troubles. Um, What's going on there? What are people... I don't know. I just... Remember we kind of thought like roaring 20s? So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call... Some of the bullshit out. So Amazon came out with their earnings and said supply chain constraints, labor constraints are causing, they know the fourth quarter is going to be tough. Okay. Apple already came out today and said the same exact thing. I think bloodbath. I'm saying it's the same thing as like COVID. The consumer isn't there. I don't think the consumer is spending. Where are, what are they doing? I think they're fucking Buying not spending. Shiba. I think the dude, we lost stimulus. Yeah. That was the money that was being spent. Oh yeah, they're also not working. Yeah, they're I not. also think it's like I think the economy was actually recovering and Delta threw everything. Threw I agree with that everything. too. But also think about the combination of like people don't want to go to work. They're seeing all these people get rich off things like Shibu. Delta's fucking shit up. Yeah. There's like this oh, this trifecta. And I also think people are just when you think about spending habits, my guess is the average person is probably pretty cautious given we had Delta. There's some uncertainties in the economy. Like you you start, I guarantee you, consumer spending after seeing Amazon stock plummet, like that 50-year-old person with the 401k that's got a million bucks in the 401k, it takes a 10% hit tomorrow. Yeah. Betty, December, we're not going anywhere. No. I mean, just, I could, like, my friend group generally travels a lot. It's still pretty rare people travel to do anything. Still kind of covid you mean? No, I, I just think the mindset just, Change. it's just not even like, you know, get out whenever you can, which is pretty much what all my friends would do before yeah. COVID. Yeah. Like, you'd always just take the random trip. I think people just don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. They're doing local trips. Like, a lot of my friends do, like, go to Newport and rent, you know, do, you know, or whatever. It's like COVID type behavior. Just like stuck. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying, okay, those are, those are one percenters. I'm saying the average person I think is, is really looking at the world and being like, it doesn't feel like a time to be spending money. And I think the consumer has cash. I think they've saved it up and I think they've been <laughs> waiting. And I think people are making purchases. You obviously see it in real estate, but like when you talk to any brand, any business, and fuck, the two biggest companies in the world just announced, yeah. shit's soft. And I know everyone wants to blame supply chain. I blame it too. Yeah. That is a huge part of the problem. But I don't. that doesn't reflect demand. Like, think about it from Apple's perspective. If Apple put up the phone and it said uh, November 1st or December 30th, people would still fucking buy it. Yeah. So that's not a reflection of supply chain. That's a reflection of there's not the demand. Yeah. And I think like the 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 GDP is reflecting 2% growth, which is way lower than what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. That was in Q3. And I obviously that was when Delta was really ravaging. And I just don't think 
I, I know we want to blame everything on supply chain. I I think it's a this is the this is the fallout of no stimulus, which is fine. Yeah. And then there's a fallout of like I I don't think a, a lot of people are still working. Yeah. Well, we're in that transition period, right? It's like are you going to go back to work or not? Yeah, and so and like maybe you have a little bit of a savings and you're trying to figure it out. Yeah. And then I think costs are obviously going through the roof. So Yeah, what's up with inflation? I mean, Gas. So the biggest drivers of inflation are usually like gas, yeah. which is still through the roof. You have uh, your basic necessities of life are so much more expensive. Yeah. So take bringing any goods from a foreign country in right now, a boat, a, a container price is still $20,000, which is insane. Yeah. And then you take increased costs in labor. Like if you're paying, you know, uh, a warehouse worker, if you were paying them, call it in LA, $15 an hour, you may have to pay 17. You may have to pay 20. Yeah. You may have to pay 22. I don't know what you have to pay to get a warehouse worker now. Yeah. It's not the same as it was. So th- there's like a real, there's too many factors. Considering the demand is lower and the costs are higher, yeah. we're kind of running into a fucking brick wall. Yeah. And I really think, I, I for some reason, I don't know why, I'll never forget the story that I think it was Anand told me about your cousin in India who sees people living their life on Instagram and is like mad about it or mm-hmm. was. Yeah. I really think the impact of that is much bigger than we give credit to. Like, I think that it's fun to joke and talk about all these people getting rich off Shibu. But I think that like, look, I don't think the majority of young people um, actually participate, but I do think the vast majority of young people know that it's happening mm-hmm. yeah. and feel left out and feel like, why would I go back to like, making coffee at Starbucks Mm -hmm. when there's kids like, no, that's not fair. Think about how many people probably quit in the last week because of Shibu. Yeah. I bet it's, if you could really track it, it's probably insane. Like they were working at Target or Walmart and and made 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah. No, or just even saw it. Like I bet, I think that they're they're like, I need to find the next one. I think there are people that say, fuck this. Number one, I'm just pissed because I see all these people. It looks like everyone's rich. And here I am at Target. You're the only person I know that's made money off Shibu. Thank I don't you. know one other person. Well, thank you. I, you I think know, it's, it's, some people call it vision. It's young people. <laughs> some people call Not, it we're, I, I, We would see it in our Discord. <laughs> people show up. Some call it genius. He, everyone shows up when they make Choose money. Choose whatever you want. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my point is like, I think, I honestly think psychologically, if you are going to work at Walmart, stocking shelves, and you see that, you in your mind it says everyone is getting rich and I'm here stocking these stupid fucking shelves. I will fuck this. So I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna spend all my days on Discord. I'm gonna figure it and out. And by the way, in, in that time, I'm making no money, not spending. Anything. I, most people never figure it out. <laughs> but the point is, I, I think that's the psychology. I think what we're what people are gonna look back, rewind in history, and not figure it out because you know these policy people are not really with the times. Yeah. Is how much crypto disrupted the labor force. Yeah, I think it's huge. It's massive. Between NFTs and crypto, dude, $36 billion of market cap. Yeah. Even that you distribute that amongst like, even there's a lot of hedge funds in it, there's still a lot of people who made a lot of money yeah. that are not showing up to their Amazon job. They're not showing up to, you know, Starbucks, like you said. Yeah. And we're like, I'm good. I mean, look, it, I would say that was a big factor with Pete. Yeah. Was he just saw like, look, yeah, freelance. I mean, he's he thought it out. I think but it's like, I think your point is basically Pete's like, look, I what I did, just fucking around with Doge. Yeah, I can figure this out and do something what I really want to do. Do a little freelance, do a little Doge trading. Why would I sit here all day? I'm yeah, not saying well, he made the wrong decision by any means. He's probably happy and killing it. But the I, point is like, I think he would have. I think where Pete messed up is he would have known about Shibu if he sat in front of a computer all day. Right. The right. same way he figured out he Doge. could have had the 5.7 billion. Yeah. Because he would have been in on that. Yeah. And he would have held it like he did Doge. I, I, I yeah, Pete fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I think the key is going to be um, it, when there is like a correction in this stuff, like, do these kids, like, because like the other problem is you have people, paper hand, diamond hands, and then all the funds already, everyone, all the funds are out of she, this Shibu. They made their money. Yeah. And we they're just going to let the night. fucking knife fall yeah, and just yeah. kill everyone on the way down. But then the problem is, like, think of how powerful the lottery is. Yeah. Like, think about all the people that, like, can't, like, literally choose between, like, a cheeseburger and a lottery ticket. All day. It's so common. Yeah. And now I just feel like it's like, all right, fuck it. I lost out on Shibu, but have you seen freaking 
meta coin yeah. mm-hmm. based off of the, whatever. Like you're, you're just going to keep playing the game until you literally are just screwed. Because I, <laughs> I also think to win there is so hard. Yeah, and I think the, to the point about the labor market, what Anna was saying, I think even if most, I would get 90% of young people have not participated in any true wealth creation in crypto. I'd say 95%. Yeah. The mere fact that there's an opportunity to yep. makes you think, why should I go to work? Yep. And, and that would be the problem. I would argue that the same way we were kind of dumbfounded by maybe five years ago, maybe more. Um, one kind of recently, actually. Uh, that Like if you interviewed a bunch of high school kids, they would say that their goal career would be like a YouTuber. Yeah. And I remember being like, damn, that's crazy. Like, it's fucking crazy. I bet you the number is very rapidly increasing in crypto trader being the answer. Yeah. I think it's all of it. Yeah. No, like, I don't think it's all of it. I think if you went around to like no. Chicago type high schools, you know, like uh, not middle of nowhere, but kind of cities. I bet you all of those kids want to be crypto traders in high school. And if you ask them what they want to be. I'd be curious. We have plenty of people who are uh, high school teachers who listen. So. Tell us. Yeah, I'd love to know. Do a survey. I would die to have a video of a teacher. I don't know if you can even do this or if we can. Obviously, we can't post it. But And just say show of hands. What do you want to do? When you athlete, do? YouTuber. Doctor. No, so YouTuber, it's, no, it's athlete, doctor, gamer, crypto, yeah. TikToker. whale, TikToker. Whale-er. I would still say TikToker is <laughs> number one. I, I'm gonna, I, but what if you're a crypto trader that makes TikToks? Because that's no, like ultimate. You know what the problem is? As, as, so we could say all these things. There's a reason why LA is LA. People, fucking Hollywood is addicting to people. So fame, you're saying? Fame, fame, yeah, fame but, is yeah. more powerful than <clears throat> fucking money. We see, we see it in this city. The most famous people in this city are fucking. Everyone's eating out of their hand at all time. I just think the thought is like, if you got rich off of crypto, you can just go hang out with fucking Taylor Holder. And I understand, but if you're 16, you I still that, want to be famous. No, I think yeah. the thing is, it's it's just. Uh, transformation. They want to get rich on crypto, then go become famous. Yeah, that's like every rich guy. I mean, we know a lot of rich. Yeah, yeah, we know a lot of rich people. Like, I mean, think them. about. I mean, the All In podcast. They're all billionaires, and true. now they got a taste of fame. That's true. Yeah, um, yeah. I would just love to hear that uh, take, but I think it's more disruptive than we know, than than people give it credit. Mm-hmm. Um. What's going on with, oh gosh, back to the boring <laughs> stock market. Uh, Oprah over at Oatly and Jessica Alba over at The Honest Company. What's going on? Stock, Their stocks are having some trouble? Yeah, I mean, Oatly was the one that when it went public, I just could not fucking believe the value of this company. Um, it was like $15 billion. Oh yeah, we talked about that. And I was like, what a great short. And yeah. lo and behold, Polly Short. Yeah, Polly Short. That could be your uh, dot uh, ETH. That could be your. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, hit a 52 week low yesterday. Wow. Um, stock has been cut in half. So that's lowest since IPO. IPO. Yep. Um, and, and, and similar to the Honest Company, uh, hit a 52 week low. Uh, market cap's now at $800 million. And I just think like, we're gonna we're about to see a flood of IPOs come out into the market mm-hmm. in the next like ninety days, like Rent the Runway we talked about. Mm-hmm. There's some other ones that are kind of questionable as well. Look, as long as you get out and the six months pass and yeah. everyone gets a little liquidity, yeah. I guess everyone wins. Did Jessica get her six months? Yeah, good for her. Okay, yeah. So you're still rich. But that's once again what we've talked about is then you're just handing that bag over to Retail Joe. <laughs> yeah. Retail Joe, there's a we lot. We haven't heard of, from him in forever because fucking Retail Jimmy, his son, got rich off of Shibu. I was talking to I don't want to mention his name, but someone from the Run Club, and he was saying that he looked at his mom's Charles Schwab account and he saw Nicola in there, <laughs> and his mom wasn't you know not into crypto or whatever, and he's like, "How did you? This is literally fraud. Nicola's fraudulent company. How'd she choose it? I don't know. It could have been like the Charles Schwab person picking it. But that's my point: is that like the allocation of your wealth is determined by a broker that is putting into shitty fucking companies. Yeah, that's scary. Okay. Uh, last but not least, what's up with our boy Joe Rogan? Oof. He's in trouble? This one's rough. What do you do now? Well, so it really started... Uh, so I, there's a couple things that are happening. Um, I think first and foremost, Joe Lonsdale. 
who is yeah. what, who, kill, let's get the let's get the Joe Rogan is what spawned right. yeah. uh, Joe Lonsdale, uh, which we'll talk about. So basically, Joe Rogan had a guest on, okay. and um, there's a picture of Pete Buttigieg yeah. and his husband or partner. Not sure if they're married or whatnot. Yeah. They. It appears to have a surrogate because it's a newborn. Okay. Just like a picture of them yep. with the baby. And they're taking Pete Buttigieg, who's a, who works for the government. Yep. Um, the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah. No, but the point is Joe Rogan starts ripping him yeah. that he took paternity leave. And then he said multiple things that are pretty, you know, things I don't agree with. He says, uh-huh. isn't the leave only for the person who gives birth? Neither of these people gave birth. You work for the government. Uh-huh. And we're giving you free money to take off. Uh-huh. And that set off like they a were. firestorm. So here's my biggest problem. Pete Buttigieg is Secretary of Transportation. I can't get anything transported to this fucking country right now. Mm. What the? I don't give a... F- that bad fucking timing, bro. Like, <laughs> Listen, Joe. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the, the Pete Buttigieg needs to understand. I think what really ticked everyone off yeah. is not that he took paternity leave. It's that you're the Secretary of Transportation. No, but Joe Rogan... That's Joe Rogan. His beef, Joe Rogan's beef was that you're a man. You're not doing shit. You don't get paternity leave. It has nothing to do about Secretary. He didn't even think about the third and fourth layers, which is what you're thinking about. So yeah. let's separate That's what those I care two. About. Did let's you watch separate it? those two. Is there a clip? There's a clip that... Um, like, was he joking? No, he said... <laughs> So then the, the guest was like, in Germany, you get uh, paternity leave for some extended period of time. And he goes, this is not Germany. This is better. This is America. We work in America. So, yeah. so that's amazing. Well, apparently I mean, Spotify gives six months of paid parental leave. I mean, Facebook, Google, all Everyone. of it. All of it. Do. All and of so, do. yeah, because in those companies, you just print money anyways. You don't really need employees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we know the amount of employees that just sit there. <laughs> sit there. Yeah. So then Joe Lonsdale. Who's Joe Lonsdale? Joe Lonsdale uh, is a Peter Thiel uh, disciple. Oh. so Is he like a PayPal mafia guy? or uh, He was too junior. Okay. So Joe Lonsdale is like my age. And he, so what does he do for a living? Uh, he started Palantir. Have okay, you heard yeah. of Palantir? Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we don't know what they do. <laughs> and then he has a fund called 8VC. Okay. So that's great context. He responds to Dan Premack, who's the Axios reporter, about this where uh, he kind of makes a comment, Joe Rogan apparently didn't know paternity leave exists while criticizing Buttigieg. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Joe Lonsdale writes back to Dan Premack and this tweet got a lot of a lot of burn. Wow, great for fathers to spend time with their kids and support moms. But any man in an important position who takes six months of leave for a newborn is a loser. In the old days, men had babies and worked harder to provide for their future. That's the correct masculine response. Well, I mean, that thing's just riddled with trouble. <laughs> can, can I ask you guys an honest question as to uh, yeah. two men with babies, two men and a baby? Is, um, what, like, why, why if, if there's two men, uh, why, why do you need the six-month uh, paternity leave? I don't have the answer to that question. I don't know. Like, what do you do with it? Like, I understand a woman, like, so, recovering breastfeeding. No, so I actually those- know people. I, here's here's a use case. I have a close friend. Both him and his wife offered the six months. It's pre-pandemic. Now everyone's on paternity leave, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, at all times. I am too. <laughs> yeah, John's on paternity leave. Uh, what they used it for, because each of them had six months. Uh-huh. So uh, the mom did the first six months, uh-huh. took off from work. And then she went back to work and he did the next six months. So they didn't have to hire help. So it saved money. Got it. So it's more just like there is so much, obviously, to do that even being around for that crucial period. Yeah, because Joe Lonsdale, where he's blanking on it, he's a billionaire. Yeah. You think he has kids. He probably doesn't even, you know, he's he's staffed up, (laughs) right? Like he's fully staffed up. That's why he's him saying it. Same with Joe Rogan. When you can afford nannies and all this, most people don't. Yeah, have that option. I I, I agree. And I think I'll tell you, I, you know, we had a kid during the pandemic and I spent way more time with Miles than I did with Dominic. Like, dude, Dominic was born four days later. I was back at the office. And obviously, since it's ultimately my business, I didn't have the luxury of like taking real time off, Mm -hmm. but I would have loved to. 
mm-hmm. if I was given the opportunity. I think my beef with Pete Buttigieg is just the position he so happens to hold. Yeah. And the time of the year yeah. is just not fucking good optics. Yeah. Well, the real criticism of Pete Buttigieg is we knew this a year ago. Why didn't you? The supply chain issues. Yep. Last October is when we started talking about like, yeah. you know, goods aren't coming. Each Everyone's companies between Winners, Reckless, 5-4, yeah. everyone was like, shit's just not coming at the pace it used to. Yep. Yeah. That's the criticism. But the paternity leave, paternity leave, our friend circle doesn't isn't relevant for this. Yeah. It's for people that don't have parents to live nearby, that can't afford help, that can't afford any of these things. Like that's yeah. super fucking like game changing. Yeah, I also think that Joe Rogan just has the biggest target that anyone's had on their back to try to like get him. He's leaning in on this though. Don't you think that's part of the act? He knows yeah. if he goes after paternity leave, yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna like trigger all the masculinity people that like, yeah, fuck that. That's the mom's job. Yeah, like, yeah. da da da. And he doubles down on that crowd. Yeah. And I think I he think knows so. what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I think so. And I think, look, at the end of the day, he's probably seen. I mean, he, I, I think he said this that, like, number one, he is pretty much uncancelable um, at this point. He would have to do something so crazy, and. He said that the every time there's a controversy, the numbers go up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think he probably knows that. And he's like, yeah. All right, well, fuck it." He knows when he says, "This is not Germany. We live in America." That's a club. They're this guy's like, been oh, doing oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's yeah. I mean, if I was his fan, I'd listen to him. Like, God Dude, the damn guy right. does yeah, America. The guy does <laughs> do stand up in front of eighteen thousand people. He knows when he's like getting a bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit. I mean, yeah. him and Chappelle are on tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they, they, I, everyone's like trying to cancel them. Meanwhile, they're selling out arenas, Literally. printing money. Literally. It's too easy. It's too, it's, it's, it's for them. It's like a meme stock. Yeah. They, they're seeing the pitch come so slow. Yeah. They're like, oh, paternity leave. That's an easy yeah, alley. Yeah. Uh, we're in America. We don't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, I don't, nothing's going to change uh, yeah. on his side, and uh, whatever. It's something spicy for everyone to talk about. Um, D, who's your winner of the last week? It's time to wrap it up with our favorite segment: winners, my, losers, cut ten. My winner of the week is our friends over at Revolve. Hmm. What, what are they up to? Fifty-two week high stock. Saw that. You're right. <laughs> I mean, those they, those guys can't lose. They huh? really can't lose. Holy cow. <laughs> I mean, I remember when that stock went public at $18 and it had like a first good kind of week and build momentum. Then the stock kind of struggled for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they, did they go public two years ago? Was that right? Sounds right. Just before pandemic, six months before pandemic. I think. Yeah. So I think. probably two years ago. Yeah. You're talking, they're up 4X. That's insane. And whenever I think of Revolve stock, all I think of is Gilly. Yeah, at the Revolve going public uh, party. Yeah. Like he became the billionaire. He became the billionaire. He became the sole founder. And he also was running around saying, <laughs> how much stock did you buy? Yeah. And if you were like, no, nah, I didn't yet. Or yeah. he'd be like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. This guy's a loser. <laughs> and then I'll just always remember Gilly's voice. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, you know, I didn't uh, play in the 4X. I mean, had, yeah. on day one, we should have loaded up. Yeah. <laughs> um, good for them. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. awesome. Um, on it. Uh, billionaires. Yeah. Keep they became trillionaires. <laughs> no, Keep they, on they, billionaires. They, they will become trillionaires, but there was all this talk about the billionaire tax uh, early in the week. Yep. And it's not happening. Joe Manchin, who's a Democratic senator, has basically said, I'm not signing off on a bill. Was that the, like, <laughs> we're going to tax you on even not realize the game? Correct, yeah. Great. Anything tradable. I mean, that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Absolutely absurd. Yeah, well, I mean, but, it, so, but it, I also think that is their version of the Joe Rogan skit. They played into... They go redi- heavy and then yeah, settle yeah, yeah. on... Yeah, settle in something... They know that's a ridiculous statement. Yeah. But you say it... I hope it, so. Yeah. Because they seem like freaking idiots No, because it, it actually... It's not just billionaires, right? So it's billion in assets and anyone who owns over... Or earns over $100 million in the last three years. So LeBron James, right? Yeah. He yeah. makes over $100 million a year. I would imagine Steph Curry earns over hundred million. I mean, what's old Nancy Pelosi make? <laughs> Two billion <laughs> shark. <laughs> no, but and there's not even a. This is why how stupid Democrats are. Yeah. There's not even like a mechanism of how is this being 
played. So they didn't identify like if you have untradeable or if you have tradable assets and you're a billionaire and earn over a hundred million, are you paying capital gains yeah. on the stuff you're selling to pay for the unrealized gains? Yeah. Like where where's the, the information? Money? Yeah, yeah, layer two, it gets messy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just um uh, yeah, whatever. I I just wish we could have one conversation about spending. Can we just peel back the hood on government spending? Just once. Yeah. And then, <laughs> sure, let's all talk about no, it. No, what we should do is we pumped six trillion, right? During the pandemic. Yeah. What ex- where exactly did all of that go? That's what I'm saying. Show me yearly government spending. Show me stimuluses or the um, And how much waste? What did we get wrong of the six trillion? Yeah. The number's gonna be staggering. It's probably a trillion went to waste. But oh, look, at the end of that? the day. At the end of the day, the government is just the biggest business. So let's see how they operate. And then let's, yeah, sure. Yeah, they don't have earnings reports. Let's look under the hood. Let's look under the hood. And then we'll all be like, oh, this is great. If we put some money here, this will work. Or where the fuck did all that go? And by the way, this is- Why is it covered by the mainstream media? Actually, because it's all public information where the money went, but why isn't anyone actually uncovering of the six trillion that went in? How much just went into liquidity of the markets to stabilize? How much went into she bond do. buying? She how do. much went into like twenty seven just billion. purely terrible yeah. things? A lot of things. Is it also public, like just yearly government spending? Yeah, it's yeah. all public information. But why so is not someone? This yeah. is just, the numbers are just too big. It's like trillion it's here. Too much trillion to simplify there. it. You can put yeah. that thing in a clean little P and L. <laughs> We did a TikTok video. Yeah. We spent six trillion dollars on snacks. Like, think about how much they probably (laughs) blew on like just PPE that was mismet overpriced. Yeah. Or they didn't source right, or it went to waste, or it got thrown away because someone fucked up. The problem is is too many people eat off that. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how many people, how many defense contractors, how many government employees? Everyone's eating. Gotta keep the party going. No, you gotta keep the party going. But no, if I, oh. By the way, baby, AWS gets mega government okay, how about contracts. This, Elon. Elon just put out a tweet. And Elon said, gets fucking too many government subsidies. Everyone is eating. Every billionaire is getting government subsidies. So the subsidies. point is, like the there's no incentive to no, no, shut, no, no. shut up and look the other way. But what if these motherfuckers come around and start taxing the shit out of you? They won't. They know. This is all charade. Charade. Gains. You don't think we could ever get to like some sort of 65% tax rate? No. Zero chance. You don't think that'll ever happen? Ever fucking happening. Now that all these like young, young socialist kids are making billions of dollars, I'm like, fuck that. Yeah, ever since Tim got diamond earrings, he hasn't said a word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tim's quiet. He's like, taxes? <laughs> taxes? You want to report these earrings? <laughs> I, um, I, yeah, I just, what I, what I was going to say is, I understand what you're saying and I, I think you're right, but it's like, if I was Elon, I would pay. Elon's the last it person. It should be like Glenn know, Greenwald. But he just tweeted it. It should be Glenn Greenwald. He, yeah, so great. Any so, Latin country? <laughs> no, no so good, great point. So he has nothing to lose. So Glenn Greenwald should make content that is not him personally, but that just breaks down where we spend money and where it goes. Like people should understand that. Mm-hmm. Everyone understands billionaires are bad. Billionaires need to share. Space More is stupid. Charity. Well, yeah, we should Space all go after the Shibu billionaire, the five, that 14-year-old kid. Tax that little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think that... So you take out hedge funds that participated. Average age of an individual Shibu holder? 21. Yeah, 20. That's crazy. Yeah. It's not even 27. No. no 27 no. Those old geezers, those old. guys were over in fucking Amazon stock. And yeah. you. So you... And me. Yeah. I'm with the youth. You're the youth. wore his 100 Thieves hoodie. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a Shibu I'm a holder. 100 Thieves high ground. Yeah, what can we say, man? You're we no stay longer young. a Shibu holder. You yeah. were a Shibu well, holder. Well, I, I kept a couple pennies in there just in case. <laughs> Give me a couple dogs. I'll go get some. We'll see. Uh, just in case that 57 billion thing pops off again. <laughs> um, okay, my winner, look, it's uh, uh, obvious, but is, you know, indeed the Shibu army, you know, which is me. Uh, and my people, uh, but we really just rallied together. We they, we we did organize with you know the, we had things like hashtags, oh and God. we really rallied about holding strong, and we uh, we changed the world. I would say, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. We're I waking agree. people up. So props to you guys. Props to us. Uh, you guys hold strong. I'll be out of here on the sidelines again, uh, but you guys you guys hold strong in there. <laughs> uh, who's your loser? My loser is um, Amazon. I, I've i been kind of obviously watching this company kind of take over retail for over all these years. Yep. 
and you finally see them struggle. Yeah. Like this, this is like the first time in four years. Does it make you happy a little bit? It does. Yeah. It does make me happy because I think they've been, they were the biggest beneficiary of COVID. Yeah. And I'm sure you could go to all these other companies, but it just solidified their presence. Yeah. Like you, you need their groceries for them. You need this for them. And, you know, they are not an easy company to work with. They're very fucking difficult to work with. Yeah. And the fact that like they are pr- proving that they are not invincible yeah. is 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 good. It's good for economy. It's good for competition. There's an there's an opportunity here for someone else to come in and service these third party brands a better way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, everyone's got to take their L sometimes. Yeah. We haven't really been harsh on Amazon since the early Lauren Sanchez days. Yeah. So <laughs> Pancake, <that's fair>. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pancake boy. Pancake um, boy. Anand, who's your loser? Uh, my loser is Web 2.0. Like yep. we talked about earlier. I think this is happening so fast. Yeah. And I'm not a visionary, so I can't explain to you how Web 3.0 is going to look. Yeah. But there's so many smart people working on it. And I think it's going to happen way quicker than any of us can imagine. Yeah. Like, will we have to get down with the metaverse, or yeah, like, will gonna, we just stay on the old shit? No, if we'll be irrelevant, so we're gonna have we to get broke. Down. We'll be poor yeah. if we don't get on. We're gonna be dowing our face up, metaversing. We're gonna have to do all of it. I feel like like physical infrastructure could it just end up like in shambles? Like every house is like kind of fucked up on the outside. Malls obviously are long gone because everyone's just as long as you have like a nice computer setup and like your VR, you're fine. Yeah. That's what it seems like. You're gonna be judged on your on your PC setup, not mm-hmm. your home decor. Yeah, because nobody even fucking goes outside to look at it. Because we're in the metaverse, bitch. We'll see. Mine is um, <laughs> my content and losers are the same, and that's Facebook. And also, if you have any interest, um, the book, uh, an ugly truth. Mm. Very interesting. Very good insight on. Uh, it also is very good insight on like as things started creeping up within Facebook, like, huh, maybe Russians are making accounts to try to um, impact our election. Uh, the way that they like dismissed it and ignored it. Yeah. And then went on the news, went to Congress, said, oh, no, like, I mean, not we haven't seen anything and maybe a very small amount. And then like the security team who they haven't met with yet knows that there's like it's a really big deal. And they've just sort of, it seems like they've put literally everything second to just growth. And I think that's now hurting them. Hurting them. Yeah. And um, and I don't think Meta's it. And I think give Ron his name back. Yeah. Seriously. Switch it up. Maybe change your name to Ron. Yeah. Imagine if Facebook just say, our name's Ron. Just Ron. <laughs> that would be better. Yeah. So we're going to choose Meta. It was taken. So we took, we picked up Ron. That would be unbelievable. That's actually a great PR move. Hey, great, man. I, I, well, if we had one week to just do yeah. Zuckerberg's PR, uh, Facebook crushing. needs to get in the meme game if you want to be relevant. Yeah. You just call it fucking Labrador. Mm-hmm. Frenchie. I like Ron. I like Ron. It's just simple. I like Ron. 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 Yeah. I agree. Okay. Uh, content. Yeah, I, I so two things. One, Kirby enthusiasm back. First episode Love came it. back. Holy shit! Crying, oh, laughing, nothing like it. Laughing, laughing out loud offends yeah. everybody as always. Yeah. Uh, incredible show. Yeah. I mean, I'd like I, the the thing that the I, the one part that got me sad is like Larry David looks a lot older, yeah. but but kind of still look at like himself. Yeah. The rest of the cast looks really old yeah. and it just like made me a little sad because I'm like fuck this is gonna come to an end soon like, how old I, do you think Larry David is? he's in his 70s That's I feel crazy. like he froze at like 55 <laughs> yeah. like, you can literally watch like season one and he looks pretty much the same, same. Yeah. it's kind of crazy and everyone around him is aged like I think he might know something yeah I mean he's very strict about his diet and he literally exercise. has not really changed yeah I just I hope he does that show until he can't speak anymore yeah, like a hundred because it's got to be like relatively easy i mean it's, this is personality right? yeah and like it's just his friends and just like the sets are all minimal yeah um it's so, just so easy to watch so that obviously so watch that it's on hbo um and then nft week is next week in new york yeah and you heading it, out i'm not heading out but it's just exciting to hear 
there's a lot of people heading out. I, hate, I mean, I, every like third person I'm talked to is heading out. And so if we have Kathy's out there, please jump in our Discord. Tell us what's going on. It feels like how South by Southwest felt, I don't know, 12, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Where it felt like something is happening. I don't know what, but I know I should be there. Is there like organization? Like, is there like an area? Yeah, there's, there's definitely meetups. There's formal kind of events, which mm-hmm. I don't think that's where the action's going to be. Yeah. I think the action's going to be like, you know, if you are an NFT holder for this, they're all linking up. Or you don't know. you think that's a big ball drop for Miami? Yeah, like you wanted to be the tech. You already have Art Basel. Huge. I thought for sure you were going to say it's in Miami. Yeah, it's already cold in New York. Yeah. Is it? I yeah, know. it's fr- probably. It's got to be fifties or something. Yeah, like I don't know. Cold, Last cold. week it was hot. Let's I was see. there, and this is the like good time of weather in Miami, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's probably. This would be perfect for Miami. Miami blew it. I, I can't believe it's in New York because because it's not about crypto anymore. It's about NFTs, and Miami's the crypto hub. Yeah, but they want to they be the sisters. tech hub. They're freaking so closely connected. Suarez, where are you at? You missed they out. It. You blew it. New York's uh, hot. Eh, we're high 50s. Yeah. That's manageable, but like, you know, it's not Miami. Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, it's 90 degrees outside right now. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Should have had it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, content on it? I'm going to be honest. I've been watching so much sports. Between NFL, NBA's back. You want to talk about? Uh, Packers, Cardinals tomorrow night. That should be a big game. Lakers are having trouble. Or tonight, right? We're just off to a rough oh, yeah, start tonight. here. Sorry, we got to get, get to know each other better. Uh, I think it's going to be a rough. Yeah. So the Lakers last night lost to the Oklahoma City Thunder, which. No is LeBron. It? No LeBron, but you have Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. It was and a bad ending. Very did bad. Did AD get no. hurt? No, he's they lost to the Spurs the other day. All I see is him losing. So yeah. the Thunder, my point, losing to the Thunder with or without LeBron, the Thunder are actively trying to lose because they're tanking uh-huh. to try to get the first pick. Yeah. And, and they still lost. They still lost. <laughs> so in a competition of who could lose. <laughs> By the way, uh, I, have a, I have a bunch of goodies for you guys as well, but uh, big shout out to the Charlotte Hornets. You know, I, I made my pick as LaMelo Ball is the future. Oh, yeah. Dude, the Hornets are hot. By the way, how hot is LaMelo Lame- La Ball? LaMelo Ball is on fire. Oh, LaMelo Ball's right balling too. Ron's just playing. So, Lam- so dad, I get... Turns out dad's a genius. <laughs> yeah. I get a uh, box sent to my house wow. from uh, Drew, who works with the Charlotte Hornets. He's a listener. Starter jackets, LaMelo Ball jerseys. I think they're signed too. No way. Yeah. What? So you ready to switch? Yeah, I'm all in on the Hornets. Wow. I mean... You got to send me stuff. I wore 100 Thieves high ground. Lakers aren't sending us anything. (laughs) I went to two Laker games. I went to the opener and I went against the Suns. You didn't get nothing. What did you get? A towel? I got a t-shirt. Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah, you got a t-shirt. That's fair enough. Okay. Well, shout out to the Hornets. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It looks like your jump is already paying off. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Oh, the other thing with the NBA is the rookies are amazing. Really? There's a kid, Jalen Green. I don't know if he's popped up in your social. He plays for the Rockets. I follow him on. He's balling. He's got. He's super fashionable. He's got yeah. all the drip. He's dripping. So remember how we used to say like LeBron is about to be out of the league and they're in shambles. We don't feel that way anymore. We, we're hopeful for the youth. Oh, meaning like the like who's who's anyone gonna watch? He's the biggest star. I think from a to get the ratings, you still need a LeBron. But I think Steph can carry the torch for a while. He's still blockbuster. And there's a kid, Evan Mobley from USC. He's balling. Really? He plays for the Cavs. The Cleveland Cavs are fun. They're yes, really they fun. I got to watch. Yeah. Who's the star over there? Uh, Garland. Darius Garland. Oh, uh, Evan Mobley. Great guys. Yeah. The Browns are decent too. Yeah, they won last Thursday. Look at us. OH. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so sports. Sports. Just fucking watch sports. This is like a great month of sports because you have NFL, World Series, and NBA all and at the same college time. College football. Like college football. Championships. NHL. I think it's just one of the ones you forgot to say. <laughs> Slipped your mind. Did now. you know Tim's like a mega NHL fan? <laughs> like, yeah, he knows neck of the woods is big in hockey oh, yeah. and lacrosse. And where are you from again? Boston, Maine. I'm from Rhode Island, <laughs> so yeah. yeah Boston, one of those. Maine. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was. Yeah. Anything yeah. we need to know about NHL? Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's hot. It's There's hot. nothing. <laughs> National <laughs> Hot League. They got, a new, they got a new Anything? team. They got a new team in the NHL. Is that the Kraken? Yeah, the Kraken. Seattle Kraken. They're they're cracking. Panthers yeah. are looking good. I think I think Florida's surprising when people know how to play hockey in Florida. That's weird. And they're doing very That's well. Crazy. Probably yeah. good at the fighting part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is so is, would you say prime time of year for sports right now? It's a good it's a good time, yeah. yeah I think so. Dodgers are out though, huh? Mm-hmm. But yeah, you get the highlights of all things. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, that's all we got. Do we have any shout outs? Uh, shout out Scott Hodges, who's a longtime listener. His brother started a company called Ultimate Track Day, okay. which hosts track day experiences. And this weekend, he's hosting an event in Walnut, which is uh, up north. Okay. And there's a rally up to Monterey with the full track day Saturday at the world famous Laguna SECA Raceway. And uh -huh. um, anyone who wants to go, uh, Google Ultimate Track Day. Apparently, it's going to be a great event. There so we go. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Okay. I like okay. it. I like that. Very official. Uh, anything else over on your guys' side? No, no other shout outs. Okay. Well, hell yeah. I like how Jason said, I texted him the shout out. And when we said shout outs, I said, make sure I don't miss this. And he goes, no shout outs. He did. He did. I, didn't, I didn't say that. I don't recall that. Anybody see that? I don't recall that. Wrap it up. I don't recall that. I mean, last episode, I got to remind everyone. Yeah. We, we had a couple of late <laughs> shout outs for Jason. You're to um, write shit down. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great uh, weekend. And we will see you Sunday. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.